Hey guys, welcome to Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'm Jeremy Yoder, and today I'm gonna to answer a question that I get multiple times every single day. And that is, if I'm cooking for an event and I'm cooking multiple different meats, how do I make sure that they're done at the right time? So as you can see on this smoker, we have several different things going on. We got some briskets, we have beef ribs, I have a bone-in brisket here, I have pork ribs, I have some other stuff that I'm using to render down some tallow. Basically, a lot of different stuff. I think the only thing that I'm missing is a pork butt, but no need to cook those today. But I wanna explain exactly how I manage the timing to cook for an event. So the first thing you wanna consider is when everything needs to be done. And what I like to do is I like to make it an hour earlier in my head so that even if something goes wrong, I'm still prepared, I can handle it and still be done on time. So let me give you an example of how I would do something if I'm cooking for you know a large gathering of friends and family. Say it's noon on Saturday that I have to serve all the food. What I would do is I'd actually start cooking at noon on Friday. Now that might sound a little crazy, but you get better results and you get to sleep. So how I'd run it is this. The first thing to go on would be briskets. And they would go on the furthest part of the smoker because they're gonna hang out for a long time. They can absorb lots of smoke. They really need a long time to be great. So they're gonna hang out there in a relatively cool part of the cooker, but still brisket weather, still between 225 and 275. Then the next thing that would go on about three hours later would be pork butts. And those things take a long time, not quite as long as briskets, but they also can do well with a long rest. And so they would go on at about 3 p.m. And then if I had beef ribs that I'm making, they'd go on at about 4 p.m. because they take about four hours less time to cook than a brisket would. So that's how I stagger everything in. If you wanna sleep, you're gonna have to cook your pork ribs the night before. Pork ribs rest okay, but they're better when they're a little bit fresher. It's up to you, it's your choice. So if you're trying to blow the socks off of everybody with the greatest barbecue that's ever been made, you're gonna to have to cook them fresh the next morning and you're not gonna get very much sleep, if any sleep at all. But what I would do if you're trying to cook everything the day before so you can sleep, is I would start them as late in the process as possible. So if you're planning to pull everything off, for me, I'd estimate about 2 a.m. What I would do is I'd put those pork ribs on at about mm, 7, 7.30, maybe eight o'clock, because I want everything to finish at the same time. So that if you have a cooler, you can put them in a cooler. If you have an alto sham or a warming oven, which is ideal, you put it in there and you can go to sleep and it keeps everything nice and hot. So that when you wake up in the morning, if anything is dropping in temperature a little too much, you can heat it back up and have everything hot and ready to serve the next day. The only thing that I would say you absolutely cannot do the day before would be chicken. If you're cooking chicken, do not do it the day before. It's gonna be a disaster. You have to do it the morning of. The benefit of doing chicken though is it's a short cook. So while you're heating anything else up that needs to be heated, say your briskets are you know, down around 140, you want them to come up to say 155. You put all the stuff that's wrapped up in the cooler part of the smoker and then you cook your chicken over here on the hotter side and you get the crispy skin, you get the smoke flavor and you're simultaneously reheating all the other food that needs to be hot and ready to serve. That way you get double use out of the wood you're burning. So to recap the timeline, I'm serving at noon on Saturday. At noon on Friday, briskets go on. 3 p.m., pork butts go on. 4 p.m., beef ribs go on. 7.30 p.m., pork ribs go on. Everything comes off at or about 2 a.m. At that point, I'd put everything in a warming oven, or if you don't have one of those, put it in a cooler and go to sleep. Wake up, say it's eight in the morning. First thing you do, you go check your temperatures. Make sure everything is still food safe. So keep it at or above 140 degrees. But don't keep it too hot because if you do, it'll all turn mushy and then the magic that is barbecue has diminished somewhat. You still want it to be like meat, but you want it to be smoky and tender, not mushy. So keep it resting at 140 to I'd say as high as 160, all that is great. And then the next morning, if you need to reheat anything, you put it back on the smoker, and then that's when you cook your chicken. I'd put the chicken on at probably 9.30 a.m. Probably takes me 90 minutes to cook, you know, 40 pounds of chicken or so. And then that all comes off at 11 o'clock. It stays hot, and you serve it at noon. That's the easiest way to get it all done if you value your sleep. Now, if you don't care about sleeping, well, then you can time everything so everything is done one hour before the event. But for briskets and pork butts, they need a long rest time to be their best. And so if you want them to be their best, you have to cook them way ahead of time, let them rest for probably eight to 12 hours is perfect, anywhere in there, but you can adjust it for your needs. 
But if you do that, you're gonna have phenomenal stuff. If you have meat that's smoky and tender, people will forgive a lot of other sins. And this way you can time it out so it's all done in time. You're not trying to go warp speed at the end to try to finish it and risk burning things. And people are gonna have stuff that's well rested, nice and juicy, and everybody wins. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed the video, if it was helpful to you, hit the like button down below and subscribe to the channel. You can also follow me on Instagram and Twitter at Mad Scientist Barbecue. I'll see you guys next time.